Okay, everyone. What I'm about to say may shock you. I really love Frosthaven. Okay, okay, okay. It's not shocking at all. If you watch this channel at all, you should know that. I started this channel basically to talk about Frosthaven. It's probably like 80% of my content at this point, but I promise there will be more new and different content coming soon. But for today, we're sticking with Frosthaven. I backed this behemoth of a box on day one on Kickstarter, and while suffering through the pandemic, I also suffered through delays of Frosthaven. It took quite a while to get here, but once it did, my group jumped right in. We've been playing it every week, non-stop since we got it. We're pretty far into the campaign, and I do love it, but it's far, far from perfect. I think it's about time we got honest with ourselves and talked about the flaws of Frosthaven. Let's get to it. So we'll start this hall of shame, if you will, by talking about the event deck in Frosthaven. Now don't get me wrong, and I will probably say this a lot, I do like a lot of things about the event deck when it comes to Frosthaven. There's more interesting NPC interaction with the events. There's low impact events. There's high impact events. There's lots of differing types that have different effects on the game and on Frosthaven, the outpost itself. I really do enjoy a lot of the events that are in there. But there is a glaring problem in my opinion. Quite often in Frosthaven, there are things that have you add new events to a particular event deck. Sometimes these are events themselves that have you add another event to a particular event deck that is supposed to come up later. Or it could be the end of a scenario that tells you to add in a specific event to one of the decks. There are many ways that add events to these different decks. The problem is every time you do that, you shuffle those decks. And that's where my main problem comes in. There's nothing that is actually going to make sure that you actually see the follow-up to any given event that you've had. There are many things that happen that could be interesting in these events, and you just might never see the follow-up. Because every time you do add another event, you're shuffling again. You keep adding events to these decks, you keep shuffling them, and they get fatter and fatter, and there's no sort of control that guarantees that you see any of the really cool stuff. The problem is, is that they added the event calendar, which is fantastic. So if they wanted to have follow-up events or follow-up activities or whatever you want to call them, why don't just add them to the event calendar? It seems silly to randomly shuffle them into a deck that's going to be randomly shuffled many, many times. And you're not going to get through every event in the event decks. So there's a good chance that you never see some of those follow-ups, and that's disappointing. For a second flaw, we're going to stick with the event deck. But now we're going to talk about a very specific event, Outpost Attacks. Now here's the first thing I'll say about Outpost Attacks. I love the idea. I kind of love the framing of Frosthaven as an outpost that is being built over time. It adds so much to the game compared to Gloomhaven. Gloomhaven was like a finished, thriving city. You didn't do anything interesting in the city at all. In Frosthaven, you have this outpost that you're helping build over time, and I love so many aspects of that. I love the buildings, I love the different things they add to the game, so on and so forth. I also really love the idea that this is an outpost, and it should act like an outpost. There are dangers. There are things that could attack you. So it sounds great to have events that lead to attacks on Frosthaven that you have to defend. But though I love the idea of it, over time I realized I really dislike the execution. Sorry. And the base problem that I have with the execution is that there is no strategy in these outpost attacks. Frosthaven, Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Line, what makes those games so great in my opinion is a deeply strategic combat. That's the main draw. You choose cards, you have different abilities, you can, they act in different ways. Monsters do uncontrollable and knowable things, and you have to deal with that. There's a lot of strategy in there. That's what we play the game for. So when there's an outpost attack, why is there no strategy? Like none. And I don't think that's even arguable. The only thing you decide when there's an outpost attack is basically whether or not you're going to expend a particular kind of resource, and I'm going to try not to spoil things here, so I'm not going to talk about that resource, because you may not have unlocked it yet. But there's one resource that you can spend that gives you a little better chance of winning that outpost attack. But when you really get down to the nuts and bolts of what an outpost attack is, it's a game of war. There's a number, you want to beat that number by drawing a better number. 
every outpost attack has a basically an attack number like let's say 45 they're attacking at a 45 power and your job to defend that is to get a higher number there's no strategy there's no ability cards there's no nothing it's just will you or will you not use this resource to give you a better chance of beating that 45. Now, and you might say there is some strategy because you can also do other things like build up your outposts to make it better or more defensible. But still, there's no strategy in the activity itself. It's just draw a card. Is it higher or lower? In the end, the outpost attacks just seem like a way to basically sap away some resources from your party. Because even if you lose an outpost attack, the ramifications are actually kind of low. So I'm going to be totally honest with you here. At this point, I'm essentially skipping outpost attacks. When I see an outpost attack come up in our event for a given week, I just erase a few resources from our sheet. That's it. Plain and simple. I've never seen anything really interesting happen from an outpost attack. Maybe I'm missing something, and please tell me if I am. But really, they're not that fun. Now, could they be fun? Absolutely! Like I said, I love the idea. So why not make an outpost attack like Maybe a mini scenario that happens in the middle of your outpost phase. Just a couple rounds of you, your characters, fighting monsters that are attacking the outpost. You can have a single map for the outpost that you use just for that. A small map. A quick little skirmish. Something to that effect. That might be fun. This is not. But hey, if you're not going to make it a mini scenario, why don't you just make it the next scenario that the group has to undertake? Have an actual outpost type scenario that's a little bit different. You already have scenarios that act like outpost scenarios with city guards and stuff like that. It could be done. That would be much more engaging than some silly little throwaway outpost attack like we get here. Okay, okay, enough about events. Let's get, it, let's get out of the world of events. That's not the only place that there's problems with Frosthaven. There are problems elsewhere, like in some scenarios. So let's talk about that. One of the primary complaints, well, I don't even know if it's a complaint, but it's definitely something people talked about when it came to Gloomhaven is that the scenarios didn't have a whole lot of variety as far as their objectives. The objective for 90% of the scenarios, maybe more, in Gloomhaven and even Jaws the Lion, was kill all enemies. Maybe kill all enemies and collect a thing, but generally it was like, go room to room, clear out this dungeon, and that's about it. Now there were a few special scenarios, but not very many. It's totally fair that they wanted to correct this in Frosthaven. I applaud them for that. The problem is, I think they went a little bit too far with that. There are many, many special rules in Frosthaven scenarios. A lot of times in my group, when we're choosing our new scenario for a week, and we look at it, if there are too many big, long boxes with tons and tons of special rules, we say, you know what, we really don't want to do this one this week. We just don't have the brain power to put all this stuff together and figure out exactly what it is we're supposed to do. What are the hoops we have to jump through to complete this scenario? Now, there are many types of special rules that they've put in, which is great. There's a lot of creativity going on there. My problem isn't with the special rules themselves. There are some cool special rules. My problem is with the balance. It seems like the further we get in the campaign, the more special rules we're encountering all the time, too. And honestly, it's getting a little bit tiring. I guess what I'm saying here is this is a game about combat. It's a game about killing monsters. I don't mind if there's a lot of them where you just kill all the enemies. That's fun. That's where the me mechanics really shine in Frosthaven. So we can just get down to brass tacks and kill enemies. So next time, let's get the balance a little bit better. Maybe 75% kill all enemies and 25% weird, crazy stuff that you come up with. That would be fine. That would be great. This next one definitely hurts my heart, but we have to talk about it. So let's get to those miniatures. Now I have to give it to them. I never painted miniatures until I bought Frosthaven. I did have Gloomhaven before, but I thought about trying to paint those and I just never got around to it. But when Frosthaven came and we were still kind of in the pandemic area, it seemed like a fun thing to do to try to pick up painting. And I did. And I really enjoyed it. That's why there's some painting videos on my channel. No, I'm not some super pro, but, you know, I can get the job done at least. So honestly, I thank Cephal Affair for that. I love that they include miniatures in here that you can paint. The problem is the quality is just not there for the most part. Now, as a brand new painter, I didn't even realize that at first. I just went ahead and started trying to paint the Frosthaven minis right away. I did okay with my first mini, which was a Drifter. I was semi-happy with it. The second one I tried to do was the Deathwalker, and it was a nightmare. And I just didn't realize that it had anything to do with the miniatures because I was new to the hobby. 
But then, as you'll see some in some of the painting videos on my site, I've painted Oathsworn minis as well, and those are leagues better than the Frosthaven miniatures. They're a little bit larger, they have more detail, everything is cut sort of cleaner. Like the thing is, with a lot of the Frosthaven minis, a lot of the details are muddied, so when you try to paint them, you lose all the detail. Try to paint the blink blade sometimes, it's tiny, teeny tiny. And maybe, you know, those pro painters out there, sure, they can make a great looking blink blade, but I'm not one of those people. The same is for any mini that's on the smaller side. The trap, the lock trap class, that's another one that was terrible. I really hated painting that mini. Now a few, like the lock fist class, were a little bit larger, and hence they were a lot better. The details stood out. So I'm just hoping that in the next game, and I know there will be a next game, that they just put a little more effort into the miniatures. I don't need them to be, you know, Warhammer Games Workshop level quality, but at least something a little bit better than what you've put out so far, so far, or at least make them consistent. I think that might be the biggest problem is that there's inconsistent quality in these miniatures. And yes, I do have to say, I know all about the campaign for the miniatures. Of course, I backed it and that is still years away. <laughs> the new ones look good. I hope that they look as they come out as good as they look in the, you know, renderings or whatnot. Uh, I look forward to that, but I'm still not going to see those until at least, I don't know, probably late 2025. Now, generally, I didn't put these in any order, but I did in fact save the worst for last. So let's talk about that puzzle book. This is another thing similar to the outpost attacks. I love the idea of the puzzle book. I like that Gloomhaven had some puzzles that had some weird side things that you did with them. I like the idea with puzzles. I like thinking, you know? And I also like the idea that the puzzle book starts out locked and you don't even get to open it for a while. I love unlocking stuff in Frosthaven. It's one of my favorite things to do. Unlock classes, unlock new scenarios, unlock new items, unlock the puzzle book. Seems great. So the first couple puzzles, I was kind of, okay, this is kind of fun. There's like a little bit of a math puzzle and then more of a standard kind of cipher puzzle. And I got into those first couple. I was able to solve them. It was fun. It was reasonable. It wasn't bad. It was sort of side thing to do. But then as I continued going through the book, the puzzles just didn't seem as interesting, first of all. It's the first thing I would say. Um, they are maybe a little more difficult, more abstract. And maybe there are people out there that are fantastic and amazing at puzzles. I'm not one of those people. I'm okay. You know, I could figure things out. But it just wasn't something I wanted to spend my time on. Which is fine. Because I thought, well, I really don't have to spend time on this if I don't want to. What's it going to unlock? Well... It unlocks a lot. The truth of the matter is, is that they're forcing you to use the puzzle book if you want to finish the campaign. And that is absolutely unacceptable in my mind. Now, I know that people will say, well, they did that to make sure that you were at certain points before you got to the end of the game, or they wanted to make sure you completed other things. You know what, though? There's other ways they could have done that rather than locking stuff behind puzzles. And it doesn't just lock you out of finishing the campaign. Now here's a little bit of spoiler here, so be prepared. You know, skip ahead, I have time codes, skip ahead. But it's not just scenarios that are locked behind the puzzle book, there are classes locked behind the puzzle book. That blew my mind. I love unlocking new classes. It's my, I've said it before, I think I've said it in this video already. My favorite thing to do in Frosthaven, in Gloomhaven, in Jaws, whatever, was to unlock new classes is why Jaws was not all that exciting for me. I had already played Gloomhaven. Anyways, that's not what we're here for. But in Gloomhaven and Frosthaven, I love unlocking new classes. There's nothing more fun than seeing this new guy with completely different mechanics. They're always interesting. They're doing different things. They look different. It's always fun. I hate the fact that they lock them behind the puzzle book. Again, I like the idea of puzzles. I think they should continue to put them in the game, but they should not unlock really important things. They should unlock, you know, fluff. Think about it like in, you know, I don't know, a competitive shooting game or something like that, where the things that you unlock with money are often things like skins that don't have any impact on the game. They just make you look a little bit different. That's the kind of thing that should be locked, locked behind something as frustrating as the puzzle book can be. So I do hope there are some kind of puzzles in the next Haven game. I just don't want to have to do them. So there you have it. My five flaws of Frosthaven. These flaws aren't fatal. I'll keep playing the game. I'm going to finish the game. I'll probably back the next one on the first day. But I'm hoping Isaac, T. 
Team Cephalofair, if you're out there, please do not lock anything behind a puzzle book next time. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.